There have been huge changes taking place around the college over the past year. Increased traffic on the small, twisting country roads has been the result of a marked inflow of new people now living in the area. With so much happening around us, the Shakespeare Group wanted to find out more about the planning of the motorway and the construction work now going on. So we decided to visit Tim Furlong, the resident engineer who is responsible for organising and coordinating many of the activities of those involved in the building of the new road. We arrived at the central headquarters of the motorway construction unit and Tim Furlong was there ready to answer all our questions. What does your job entail? My job is I've got about three or four responsibilities and first, first, firstly I deal with uh, calls from the public uh, from county councillors and alliés with the two different county councils. The, this motorway has been built in two county council areas. One is South Dublin County Council and the other one is Dunleary Rathdown County Council. So there's a fair amount of liaising between the two authorities. Then I also deal with landowners and I, 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 people, different landowners will ring me up when, when there's a problem or if, if they want to discuss works on their land. When will the roadway be finished? Well, this section of motorway is the Southern Cross Road Motorway Phase 1 and it is a three-year contract and it will be finished around April, May 2001. And that section, uh, the, the section of the motorway that will be finished will be, in fact, two sections. Uh, the job that we're working on now, and there's a second section which brings the motorway down to the Ballantyre interchange, and that's just started, and that's an 18-month contract, and that will finish at the same time. So you'll be able to uh, get out uh, on and off the motorway at Ballantyre about around about May, June 2001. Approximately how many workmen are working on the road altogether? I'd say there's about two to three hundred people altogether working uh, on, on the different sections of the road. Okay, this the Southern Cross Route Motorway Phase One, which is the the contract that we're building at the moment starts with a tie-in here to the existing motorway, which is the Western Parkway, uh, the M50. And we are constructing here a new interchange on the Tala Bypass at Balrothery. The motorway then will pass under the Furhouse Road, the new bridge bringing the traffic on Furhouse Road over the motorway. We then come down to the Scholarstown interchange, where traffic will be able to get on and off the motorway and join the local network. The motorway then comes in between housing estates here, and crosses underneath Stocking Lane, about 20, uh, 20, meter, 20 feet, about 6 or 7 metres below the existing ground level. The motorway then swings around and goes over High Level Bridge here at Edmundstown Road and goes between Edmundstown Golf Club and Rathfarnham Golf Club. And then the motorway passes through open countryside here with farms on either side to the new bridge at Kilmashog. And this is where the, the new entrance into St. Columbus College is off Kilmashog Lane. The new college road then has been just opened and is built on the Grange Golf Club and Marley Park side of the motorway. The motorway is in, in very tight curves as it goes between St. Columbus College and Marley Park and then swings around and our phase, phase one, finishes just up here at, at Ticknock uh, near Black Glen Road and there's a uh, quantity of, of rock uh, has been excavated from this area. Phase two then starts at Ticknock and will bring the motorway down through Ballantyre Road which has just been closed, this section of Ballantyre Road and will finish at a new interchange here at Ballantyre Interchange. The last section of the motorway then is, re is referred to as the South Eastern Motorway and it brings the motorway from Ballantyre down towards the Sandyford interchange here, which is near Sandyford Industrial, uh, Sandyford Industrial Estate, 
it passes then close to Leopardstown, Leopardstown uh, race course here and goes through Carrick Mines, the new interchange at Carrick Mines and eventually there's a the, the last interchange here is at uh, Lachlanstown and this will join in with the, the Wyatville Junction here on the existing Bray Road and then the motorway connects back into the Bray Shankhill by Bypass which is the road that leads down to Ross Lair and links in here with a new connection here down about a kilometre down on the existing Shankhill Bypass. In the course of testing McAdams here we use a nuclear density gauge. Uh, the nuclear density gauge has two sources of radiation, a cesium-137 and americium-241. Uh, basically it emits uh, photons uh, down to the surface of the McAdam and uh, these uh, photons are counted back uh, on a detector plate at the back of the machine. Uh, the electronics in the machine then uh, cal calculate that back to um, something that we can recognise as in kilograms per metre cubed and uh, previous calibration allows us to give a, a percentage compaction. Basically, in our specification, we require the macadam to be uh, compacted to 93% of its uh, total, and uh, the, the nuclear density gauge will allow us to determine that the level of compaction. It's, uh, it's uh, not very dangerous. Um, it's very um, very highly controlled by the Radiological Protection Institute of Ireland. Uh, they require uh, licensing and they also require a dosimetry which is uh, where you wear tags and they get sent away uh, on a monthly basis uh, for testing to see how much radiation, how much dosage you have picked up. Uh, basically, um, you don't pick up very much, you, no more than background ra radiation. Um, if you do, you basically have to answer very severe questions to them. Uh, so basically, there's a principle that the RPII adopt, which is an ALARA principle. It's A-L-A-R-R, -R, which is as little as reasonably achievable, uh, which means basically when, you pre when you're working with it, you stand back as far as possible as you can from it. If you want to take it to bed, then you're going to pick up serious doses. There is much heavy work underway. All around we can see men labouring away, but are there any women working on the new road? We have... Uh, what? What you're building you're in here are the offices of the resident engineer and our job is to supervise and to measure the works that are being done by the contractor. So we have um, various engineers and technicians and then we have some secretarial staff as well. And I think we have two uh, women who, who are working as engineers and we have one woman then who's working as a surveyor and then we have two secretaries, so that would be, would be five on our side, and then there would be some other, there would be some women over on the contracting side as well. Will there be any many shops and petrol stations along the route? If so, will there be any near St Columbus College? At this stage, I don't know whether there will be uh, any. Effectively, there wouldn't be any individual shops on, on a motorway. There would be, like, like in England, there would be service centres. Uh, now, I, at this stage, I don't know whether there's any, any planned. There aren't any planned at the moment. Maybe somebody will come in with a, 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 a plan sometime later. But I, I'd have my doubts on this um, length of motorway that there would be a need with, with all the sort of shopping centres that are very close to the existing motorway. How many hours a day do you work on the roads? How many hours? Well, we, the site starts here, the, the contractor starts at around 7 a.m. in the morning and works to 7 at night. But those, are the, those are the hours during the summer, summer months. And then in the, when, when the clock goes back, the hours obviously change. Yeah. Um, and they also work then Saturday morning till about, uh, they work from I think 8 o'clock Saturday morning to around about 3 in the afternoon. How expensive is the project and how has it been financed? This section of the motorway is about 7 kilometres long. In fact, we've just added a section to it, so it's now nearly 8 kilometres long. Um, it's going to cost about 80 to 90 million pounds, the whole, this, this section. 
Um, the financing comes largely from the European Union and about 85% of the, of the cost comes from structural funds and cohesion funds from the European Union. The rest of the money then will come from the government, the, the Department of the Environment. Will the road make a huge difference to traffic in the city? Well, it, uh, as, as you know, this section of the, 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 this, the ring route road around Dublin is made up of different sections and about uh, over a half has been built to date. Uh, uh, that, that would be the section from Talla to the airport. So the amount of traffic that's using that at the moment is, is up to something like 60,000 cars plus a day. So obviously it is making, a, if those cars had to use other roads, there, there, there would be considerable congestion. So it will make a huge difference, I think, around, especially around um, the roads around St. Columbus, uh, the road there, Black Glen Road and Harold's Grange Road, where there's enough, there's a, I think there's about 25,000 cars using that narrow road up, up, up there by land oils. So a lot of that traffic will divert onto the motorway when it opens. Have there been any unexpected difficulties? We had, we've had one, one difficulty uh, which we maybe should have expected, but it was due to a delay in uh, moving, movement of earthworks on the site. And it happened at the, uh, the Edmundstown River. And the contractor had to fill in and divert, divert the river and fill in the, the, the old riverbed. And because his program ran late, the, there's, a, there's a moratorium on, on uh, when you're allowed to divert a river due to fish, fishery, the fishery board. And I, the, there's a spawning season between uh, October and March. And unfortunately, the program was delayed and the contractor was not able to, to move the river uh, before the spawning season started. So he, the program then got delayed by about four months in that particular area. So that was one thing that uh, might have been foreseen but wasn't foreseen. There would, there would always be, be uh, situations on site where ground conditions aren't quite as you, as, you, as you would expect them and maybe they would have to put in deeper depths of road, road materials than, than they would have uh, predicted at the first instance. When will the section near Columbus be finished? Right, well, the, the whole motorway programme is three years and effectively the section by Columbus is right in sort of the, the, the middle third of, the, of the, uh, the contract. So I think works will be ongoing there really for the next year and a half. Um, they are building, this, the, the, the works that are involved there are, um, there's, a lot, there's a very narrow gap for the road to, to be built through in that area because when the road was being planned um, they tried to minimise the land take from the college and from Grange Golf, Grange Golf Club and from Marley Park and so the, 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 they designed retaining walls to minimise the land take so that, so that the side, side slopes for the motorway were constrained with the retaining walls. So there's a lot of retaining walls still to be built in the area. So I would see works going on there for at least another year. So there is still a great deal of work to be completed near the college grounds. And in the areas close to the college, there are many new muddy tracks appearing, where before there were only green fields. Engineers and surveyors working from morning to late at night trying to avoid as much inconvenience as possible to residents and to those who have to use the limited access now available to traffic because of the construction that is presently underway. Everywhere we see signs going up warning those living in the area about blast days when dynamite is being used to clear away some of the hard granite rock in this mountainous area. Roads are being closed, which adds greatly to the traffic congestion near the school. The music teacher in the college, Mr. Jenkins, said that a two minute journey from his house to the school then takes 20 to 25 minutes. Although the lower end of the college looks more like a bomb site than a construction area, the changes are being made with careful attention to environmental issues such as wildlife. 
but the Shakespeare group are convinced that clearing motor traffic away from the residential areas like this is better than the alternative, congestion and fumes near the school. Although there is still much inconvenience approaching the school, already the phoenix of the new motorway is clearly beginning to rise from the ashes of the old, narrow, winding roadways.